Not too far from Earth is a giant space rock that has silently played host to just 12 people in its entire history. What would happen if we put our cosmic satellite to work by covering it with solar panels? What would it take to build an enormous power plant on the moon? How big would this facility be? And how much time would it take to finish this mega construction? This is What If, and here's what would happen if we covered the moon with solar panels. Because the moon has little to no atmosphere, there's no wind, no rain, and no clouds on that space rock. If a lunar weatherman were to tell you the forecast, it would always be the same. Once again today, you're looking at a daytime high of 130 degrees and sunny, sunny, sunny. Imagine how much energy we'd collect from a place where the sun never stops shining. But how would we even build a solar plant on the moon? One Japanese company, Shimizu, already has that covered. They want to build a so-called Luna Ring. And yes, it would look just the way it sounds. A ring of solar panels spanning around the moon. The construction would stretch for 11,000 kilometers along the moon's equator and would reach 400 kilometers in width. That's enough to cover half of the United States. Where on Earth would we even find enough materials for assembling this enormous solar plant? Well, the answer lies outside of our planet's natural budget. Most of the building materials would come from the moon itself. They'd begin assembling solar panels from the lunar materials. With nothing but lunar soil and gravel, they'd make concrete, ceramics, and solar cells. Meanwhile, astronauts on Earth would be working on building spaceports in low Earth's orbit to ship the remaining supplies, like hydrogen, to the moon. Even with the most advanced technology we can think of, the construction would take at least two generations of humans to complete. But once it's done, we'd have a super efficient lunar power plant, churning out power 24-7. Because there are no bad weather days on the moon, ever. But what about getting that power back to Earth? Well, that's the fun part. On the moon, the lunar power plant would transmit solar power to the energy converting facilities. From there, the converted power would be beamed to power collecting stations on Earth with lasers and microwaves. How cool is that? Potentially, it could deliver so much energy that we wouldn't need any other power sources at all. Maybe building the lunar power plant would happen at the same time we constructed a human-occupied moon base that would one day grow into a fully operational human colony. But that's a story for another What If. So let's deal with the first unit, that is Zen aspects of uh, solar cells. And coming to the syllabus of this uh, unit, we are going to see the design of the solar cells here. We will see the design for high short circuit current, the design for high open circuit voltage and the design for high fill factors. As well as we are going to see an instrument called solar simulator by means of which we will use it to measure the IV characteristics of a solar cell or panel. And then we will see the quantum efficiency. Coming to the learning objectives of this uh, unit number one, there are 10 learning objectives. There are the first one is working of a solar cell followed by equivalent circuit model of a solar cell, then parameters of a solar cell, then what are the upper limits of a solar cell parameters, then what are the losses in the solar cells and then we will see the main topic of this first unit is the how to design solar cells to get high short circuit current, then how to design solar cells to get high open circuit voltage, then how to design a solar cell to get high fill factor and then we will see solar simulator that is the measurement of IV characteristics of a solar cell and finally we will see quantum efficiency of a solar cell right so what is a solar cell a solar cell is a device which will convert the radiant energy of the sun into electrical energy in a single go that is it is a single step energy conversion device or a direct energy conversion device which will convert the sunlight into electrical energy. So let us see the formation of a depletion region. So before that the solar cell is made of what? It is made of 
a semiconductor material called silicon it is similar to that of a diode it has both an n type and p type semiconductors right it seems the structure of a solar panel or a solar cell is similar to that of a p n junction diode it is also made of semiconductor material called silicon so let's see the formation of a depletion region right in a solar cell in order to fabricate a solar cell we need to use two types of semiconductors that is extrinsic semiconductors that is p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor in a p type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are holes and in the n type semiconductor the majority charge carriers are electrons whereas the minority charge carriers in case of a p type or electrons as well as the minority charge carriers in case of a n type semiconductor or holes so when i combine p type and n type together now what happens at the junction due to concentration gradient that is on the p side the number of holes are more compared to that of the number of holes on the n side because holes on p side p side are the majority charge carriers and holes on the n side are the minority charge carriers so obviously because of this concentration gradient the holes will start flowing from p side to the n side and similar thing will happen with the electrons as well so the electrons which are more in number in the n side will move towards the p side where the electrons are very very less and thereby this movement of the electron and holes from n side to p side as well as from p side to n side will takes place when we combine or p type or n type semiconductor materials now what happens so there is a formation of a depletion region so what is a depletion region the the region which is free from charge carriers is called a depletion region in the depletion region towards the p side you you have a negative charge carriers or ions or on the n side you have a positive ions why there is a negative ions on the p side and why there is a positive ions on the n side as we all know that whenever an object loses electrons it becomes a positive charge on the other hand if an object gains electron it becomes a negative charge the same thing happens the electrons are moving from n side to p side so n side is losing the electrons and that's why it becomes a positive charge and p type is gaining the electrons and that's why it becomes a negative charge so a region is formed called depletion region which is free from charge carriers right now let's see the working of a solar cell right the top layer is a n type semiconductor layer and it is very very thin and the thickness of this uh, top layer in a solar cell is only 1 micrometer we generally refer to the top layer of a solar cell as a emitter of the cell the bottom layer is the p type semiconductor layer and it is much more thicker than that of the n type layer that is a top layer it is almost 100 times more thicker than the top layer the top layer is only 1 micron thick whereas the bottom layer the thickness of this one is 100 micrometers and we call this bottom layer of the cell as base of the cell the top layer is a emitter of the cell and the bottom layer is called the base of the cell right a depletion region is created at the junction of these two layers due to immobile charge ions it is how the pn junction depletion region is formed in a solar cell when we combine n type and p type layers then when sunlight strikes on the cell it is easily reaches up to the pn junction because the top layer is a very very thin layer of 1 micrometer so the sunlight has to pass through just 1 micrometer in order to reach the depletion region so the pn junction absorbs the photons of the sunlight and consequently produces electron hole pairs in the junction right so actually the energy associated with photon excites the valency electron of a semiconductor atoms 
and hence the electron jumps to the conduction band from valency band leaving a hole behind in the p layer or in the valency band now the free electrons find themselves in the depletion region will easily pass to the top n layer because the attraction force that is the positive ions in the depletion region that is the positive ions in the on the n side of the depletion region attracts the electrons towards them on the other hand the negative ions which are there on the p side of the depletion region attracts the hole which is a positive charge carrier towards them and thereby the electron will move towards the n layer and holes will move towards the p layer as the negative charge that is the light generated electrons is trapped on the n side and positive charge that is light generated holes are trapped on the p side of the cell so there will be a potential difference between these two sides of the cell right so on the top layer we have a negative charge carriers and on the bottom layer you have a positive charge carriers then automatically the electric field got produced between these two sides of the cell and the potential difference is typically 0.5 volts coming out from a single solar cell and next let's see the equivalent circuit model of a photovoltaic cell we have already seen this topic in the last uh, subject that is pvt1 so the equivalent circuit model of a photovoltaic cell is given as shown in the slides a photovoltaic cell is nothing but a, a pn diode and to this diode the diode is a passive element so in order to convert this passive element into active element we need to put this diode under the sunlight that is the photon source ip so whenever you place this uh, pn diode under the sunlight you will get the electrical energy generation that is it will become a active element right so there there are two different resistances in this uh, photovoltaic cell that is the non idealities the first one is the rsh and the second one is rsc that is shunt resistance and series resistance so what is the current equation of a solar cell if you apply kcl here what is kcl sum of incoming currents equal to sum of outgoing currents if you apply kcl at the first node at the diode p side then what you will get sum of incoming currents are nothing but only photon current ip what are the outgoing currents id ish as well as i so id is the current flowing through the diode ish is the current flowing through the short circuit uh, sorry current flowing through the shunt resistor and i is the load current flowing th through the load right therefore ip equal to id plus ish plus i so during the operation the efficiency of the solar cell is reduced by the dissipation of the power across the internal resistances these parasitic resistances can be modeled as a parallel shunt resistance and series resistance now let us see the current equation of a solar cell so the iv curve of a solar cell is a superimposition of the iv curve of a solar cell diode in dark with the light generated current that is the light has the effect of shifting the iv curve down into the fourth quadrant where power can be extracted from the diode so all these things we have already gone through it in the last semester so the illumination of the cell adds to the normal dark currents in the diode so that the diode law becomes as i told you ip equal to id plus ish plus i so what is ish the current flowing through the shunt resistance that is what is the voltage across this uh, shunt resistance that is v is the voltage across the anode and cathode and there is a voltage drop that is i into rs and thereby v plus irs is the voltage drop across the i rsh that is shunt resistance therefore the current flowing through the shunt resistance is nothing but the voltage across the shunt resistance divided by the shunt resistance itself that is what is the voltage across the shunt resistance v plus irs and thereby what is the shunt current v plus irs by 
RSH. Therefore, the current flowing to the terminals of a PV cell is given by I equal to IP minus ID minus ISH. Right? That is the current flowing through the terminals of a solar cell or the current flowing through the load is nothing but the photon current minus diode current minus shunt resistance current. So, I is equal to IP minus ID. What is ISH? That is V plus IRS by RSH. And now, the diode current equation as per PN junction theory is given by ID equal to I naught into E power VD by NVT minus 1. So, what is the voltage across the diode? The voltage across the diode is similar to that of the voltage across the shunt resistance because both are connected in parallel. Therefore, what is the voltage across the diode V plus IRS? And therefore, the equation becomes ID equal to I naught into E power in place of VD will place V plus IRS by v NVT minus 1 where N is the ideality factor, I naught is the reverse saturation current and VT is the temperature equivalent of voltage. The ideality factor in case of silicon is 2. That is N is equal to 2 if the diode is made of silicon. So, what is the temperature equivalent of voltage? It is given by KT by Q. What is K? Boltzmann's constant. So, what is the value of a Boltzmann constant? 1.3807 into 10 to the power of minus 23 joule per Kelvin. What is T? Temperature. And what is Q? Charge of an electron. What is the what is its value? 1.602 into, into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. So, if I place K and Q in the equation, I will get Vt equal to T by 11600, where T is the temperature in Kelvin. That is the thermal voltage corresponds to cell voltage is given by T by 11600 volts. Right? So, so, the reverse saturation current in a solar cell depends upon the doping of the PN junction material properties as well as the temperature. Therefore, I naught equal to Ct power m e power minus Vz0 by n Vt. So, where C is nothing but a constant which depends upon the dimensions of a PN junction and also on the material properties. Whereas, Vz0 is nothing but the band gap or the forbidden band gap energy and it is in between 1.11 and 1.21 electron volts for a silicon depending upon the grade of the silicon. Right? If it is a electronic grade, the band gap is 1.11 electron volts. If it is a solar grade, the band gap is 1.21 electron volts. For solar grade, it is equivalent to 1.11 electron volt. So, M is the exponent and whose value depends upon the type of the material used. Here in case of a silicon made PV cells, the value of the exponent is 1.5. So, finally, what is the current equation of a solar cell? I is equal to IP minus I naught into E power VD by NVT minus 1 which is nothing but the diode current minus V plus IRS by RSH which is nothing but the current flowing through the shunt resistor. All these derivations we have already gone through it in the last subset that is SPVT 1. We are just breaking it up. Then what are the parameters of a solar cell? Right. The first parameter of a solar cell is short circuit current. So, what is a short circuit current? The short circuit current is the maximum current that can be drawn from a solar cell. Right? It is the maximum current that is drawn from the solar cell. The cell voltage at this point is 0. That is, the short circuit current is the maximum current drawn from the solar cell when the terminals are short circuited. That is, that the voltage across the terminals we made it equivalent to 0. That is, ISC equal to I max. That is the, the short circuit current is the maximum current which is equivalent to the, the current I when the voltage across the device is a 0. Right? So, the short circuit current is a light generated current and it increases with increase in 
light intensity that is as the light intensity increases the short circuit current increases as the light intensity decreases the short circuit current decreases now you can see so the present equation of a solar cell is i is equal to ip minus id minus ish that is ip minus i not into v plus irs by nvt minus 1 minus v plus irs by rsh what is the short circuit current it is the current when the voltage is zero that is in order that the i should become isc then i have to keep the voltage as a zero that is isc equal to ip minus i not into e power in place of v i am keeping zero that is zero plus irs by nvt minus one minus v in place of v i have to again keep zero plus irs by rsh now as we already know that the value of rsh will be in the range of uh, hundreds it will be around 200 and 300 but the value of rsc is very very less it is in the range of 0.2 and 0.2 to 0.8 and thereby rsh is always far far greater than the rs and thereby isc into rs will make it approximately equivalent to zero we'll assume it to zero and thereby what we'll get so isc is equal to ip minus i naught into e power zero plus isc into rs is also zero by nvt minus one minus again zero plus isc into rs is zero by rsh so by making this small assumption we got it as isc equal to ip that is the short circuit current is proportional to the photon current photon current is proportional to the solar radiation intensity therefore the short circuit current is the light generated current and increases linearly with increase in sunlight and the next point and, and the next parameter of a solar cell is open circuit voltage so what is a open circuit voltage the open circuit voltage is the maximum voltage generated by the solar cell at the given light intensity that is the open circuit voltage is also the voltage at which the current flowing through the cell is zero that is the the open circuit voltage is equivalent to the maximum voltage when the current flowing through the solar cell is zero you can see the on the x-axis part right it's called the voc so the open circuit voltage increases with increase in light intensity both the short circuit current and open circuit voltage increases with increase in light intensity that is as the light intensity increases both open circuit voltage and short circuit current increases as the light intensity decreases both open circuit voltage and short circuit current decreases right now let's see the derivation of a open circuit voltage the current equation of a solar cell is i is equal to ip minus id minus ish therefore what is id i not into e power v plus irs by nvt minus 1 and what is the shunt resistance current v plus irs by rsh so what is the voc voc is the maximum voltage that, that is obtained from a solar cell when the current flowing to the solar cell is zero that is when we open circuited the solar cell terminals so what happens now in order to get the voc we need to keep i equal to zero in the above equation therefore zero equal to ip minus i naught into e power in place of v what we have to keep voc plus i into rs so what is i zero and therefore zero into rs will be zero by nvt minus one minus in place of v we will keep voc plus i into rs i is zero therefore i into rs is zero by rsh and we already know that the rsh of a solar cell will be in the range of 200 to 300 but whereas the VOC will be in the range of 0.5 volts. Therefore, the VOC value is very very less compared to that of the RSH value. The VOC will be in the range of 0.5 volts, but the RSH will be in the range of 200 to 300 ohms. And thereby VOC by RSH will be approximated to 0. So, by taking this assumption, let us move forward. That is 0 equal to IP minus I naught into E power vvc by nvt minus 1 minus 0 right so we'll get so let's rearrange this then we'll get ip plus i naught by i naught equal to 
e power voc by nvt so applying the logarithms on both sides what we will get ln of ip plus i not by i not equal to ln of exponential of voc by nvt so ln and exponential got cancelled with each other and we'll get voc by nvt and from that what is the final voc equation nvt into ln of ip plus i not by i not therefore voc is proportional to what the logarithm of a photon current therefore voc is proportional to the logarithm of solar radiation intensity therefore as open circuit voltage increases logarithmically with increase in light intensity so you can see the parameters here both voc and isc are proportional to the sunlight both will increase if sunlight or the solar intensity increases but there, there is a point to be observed here when solar radiation intensity increases the isc will increase as linearly but whereas whenever there is an increase in solar radiation intensity the voc increases but increases logarithmically which means very very slowly and the third parameter is peak power so what is this peak power or the peak operating point or the maximum power point so we have to operate the pv cell always at the maximum power point so the electronic load applied to the pv panel should behave in such a manner that the pv cell is operating most of the time at the maximum power point in order to deliver the maximum power to the load thereby utilizing it to the fullest so what is the vmp that is the voltage corresponding to maximum power point and what is the im or imp which is the current corresponding to maximum power point right and the one more parameter of a solar cell is fill factor the fill factor is the figure of merit of a solar panel it tells you how good or how bad is a solar panel is at the ideal operating point the value of rsh should be infinite whereas the value of series resistance is zero right you will get a square type curve with voc at the x axis and isc at the y axis so voc and isc is the ideal characteristic but vmp and imp is the practical characteristic of a solar cell and this practical characteristics will come because of the shunt and series resistances in the solar cell right so what is a fill factor it is the maximum value to the theoretical value of a solar cell the fill factor is the maximum power to the theoretical power in a solar cell so what is the maximum power v maximum into i maximum what is the theoretical power vvc into isc 